Today, we're going to take a closer look at the FPGA from Osprey Electronics, more specifically the E100 with the VU35P board. Having been introduced to the market last year, it's fair to state that the unit is not new. So why did I buy one now? Simply because this is my first step away from using GPUs as my primary workhorses on the farm. And while an ASIC has its place, it also has its limitations, and I like the fact that I still have a choice, while limited, to what project I can point the FPGA to. A big hand to Osprey Electronics for putting together packaging that is mindful to the shipping experience. This is not always the case, so I was pleased in seeing how it was shipped and the condition that it arrived in. My intent is to allow this video to be an overview, sharing my first impressions as we set up the unit. This allows the video to be shorter, but you'll find additional videos about this FPGA that will explore specific algorithms in greater detail. Let's get started. Setup for the unit is relatively straightforward. At the same time though, a manual guide is included. In short, once you have the unit in place, all one has to do is provide power and an internet connection. To provide power, I chose to go with a combination of an HP server power supply and a typical breakout board that we see often with our GPU rigs. Also, let's note that I chose to go with the Noctua fan setup. This allows for a more quiet unit. Internet connection is straightforward, and once in place, we're ready to turn the unit on. At first, the noise caught my attention as the fans ramp up, but after a few moments, things quiet down and we're ready to log into the unit. To do so, one needs to log into their network router. I'll take it for granted you're familiar with this process, but it often starts by typing the default IP address to the router provided by the manufacturer. This will allow users to identify the IP address that is assigned to your E100 or E300. Once logged in, users are presented with a clean and straightforward user interface. We have a few choices on the left hand side. The first, mining board status and settings. Here we are presented with some data with an emphasis on voltage settings and temperatures. Note, because I only have one board installed, the status appears as so, where operators of the E300 will have a complete display of data. Next we have fan speed settings. Users have an option between using a fan curve or a fixed fan speed that can be set manually. This is a subject that will be influenced on the number of FPGAs being run as well as the algorithm chosen. In any case, it's good to have these options. I'm going to skip over minor option just for a moment. Next, when available, there is an option to perform a firmware update. System settings with its own submenu, where if needed, you can manage the network settings, notifications, your password, or perform a factory reset. There's also the diagnostic menu option. Now let's go back to the minor menu. At the time of making this video, users are given the option to mine seven different projects or algorithms, Caspa, Etash, such as Ethereum Classic, Ironfish, Kylacoin, Radiant, Etica, and the recently added Alifium. Similar to any other mining experience, we need to identify the pool that we want to point to, the wallet that we want to deposit our earnings into, and it's good to provide a unique worker ID. Note, depending on the project you're supporting, there is some variation in the user interface. For example, when mining Ironfish, users need to identify the FPGA core clock for each respective board. But when working with Radiant or Alifium, there is a more simple setup where the data field is filled out one time and then that clock speed is applied to all available cards. Let's also note you can choose to set up the miner with a command line. But I'm lazy and appreciate the menu interface. 
There's also the option to enable or disable the auto start feature. Simply, that's it. Hit start and the unit is up and running. I'll wrap the video up by sharing a chart sharing the unit's performance. Comparing the results to similar priced investments, such as the RTX 4090. Users will have to decide on how they want to specifically run their units, but in this chart, you will be presented with both the E100 and the RTX 4090 using relatively efficient settings. The RTX 4090 and the E100 from Osprey are similar in price, and while the GPU offers the benefit of being able to point to a large number of projects, the FPGA's obvious benefit is the efficiency in the amount of power it draws. I'll let this video conclude, but look further into this video series to take a deeper dive into the available algorithms available to mine, along with their overclocks and how to best scale. If you're just starting to look at the E100 or E300 from Osprey Electronics, I hope this video offered some insight. If so, a hit on the like button is appreciated. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, showing your support. As always, be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.